I'm Sammy and I'm so glad you're here because we've got a lot of summer fun happening in Time Travelers. All summer, we're finding out how we can make waves. And I don't just mean splashing in the water. What we're discovering together is this. What you do today can change the world around you. Isn't that so cool? When we put our faith in Jesus, we have the gift of God's Holy Spirit living inside of us. That's how we can make waves. That's how we can change the world around us. We can choose to live God's way with things like love, peace, and patience. We can show others what God is like with the way we act every day. For example, if we're following Jesus, other people will be able to see the joy in our lives. Hey, Sam Bone, what's going on? <laughs> Speaking of joy, Rich is here. Yeah, hey, everybody, it's great to see ya. Oh, Rich, you don't look so good. Oh, what do you mean, Sammy? I, I'll be fine. Rich, is that even you? Well, of course it's me. I mean, I, I know I'm not much to look at, but... Uh... <laughs> um, why? Why do you have a towel on your face? Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't notice. Is it that obvious? I hate to say it, but it's kind of hard to miss. Well, I'm just trying to get my face to relax. You were trying to get your face to relax? Yeah, you know, using a nice warm towel. I've, I may have strained it a little bit. You and may, you, my elbow. You may have strained what? Yeah, my, my face and my elbow. <laughs> it's all right. I'm fine. Let's, let's do time travelers, <laughs> right? You know? Now, Rich. Yeah. This is ridiculous. You can't strain your face. Yeah, I only wish my face knew that. Come on, take it off. <sighs> you didn't strain your face. Ah, uh, all right. I'll take the towel off if you say so. All right, everybody. This is what it looks like. I, oh, I don't think I can do it. No. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to count to three, okay? okay? Will you count with me? Yep. On three, I'll take it off? Okay. Okay. One, One two. two. Three. Three! I can't do it, Sammy! Come on, Rich! Oh. All right, all right, here we go. Oh. What is wrong with your face? I told you I strained it. Can I put the towel back on now? No, no. Oh. How did you strain it? Well, I was doing this particular workout. What kind of workout? Well, it was to improve my Selfie game. Your yeah. selfie game? Yeah, I must have really let myself go. I haven't taken a good selfie in two or three months, so I thought I'd step it up. But now I'm pretty sure I'll never take a selfie again. Now, you can't say that. I know how much a good selfie means to you. Right? I know. Now, hang on a second. Let's reveal the life app we're talking about today. Okay. Because I think it might help. With my face? Maybe. My cheeks are burning. Let's check it out. What you do today can change the world around you. Oh, wait. I got to get a selfie. When we choose to follow God and his son, Jesus, God sends his spirit to live in us. And that spirit can help us produce things called the fruit of the spirit. We just happen to call them life apps around here. And when God's spirit is living inside of you, you have the ability to choose joy no matter what's going on. So are you telling me I should choose joy even though my face looks like this? Exactly. Even though I scare small children, pets, and the occasional clown? Even though that. <laughs> yes, you can still choose joy. But why? Because your face makes me smile. It makes everybody watching at home smile too. Really? Absolutely. You are now the selfie poster child for joy. You know what? I got an idea. In honor of you, let's both make our best joy face and we'll take a selfie. Oh, that's great. I've been practicing for this. Okay, are we ready? Yeah, ready? All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, look, that looks perfect. Oh, wow. wow. This is pretty good. And hey, you know what? I was having so much fun with you and I smiled for real. Oh, my face relaxed. See what can come out of choosing joy? Oh, you know what else can come out of choosing joy? What? Oh, you making this face. Look, you look even worse than I do. <laughs> Thanks? 
Thanks. No, no, it's really, it's good. Here, let me upload it right now. <laughs> all right, I just gotta tag all your friends. You know what? Why don't we just check in with Haley to see how <laughs> she's choosing joy today? All right. I think we could all use a little more joy right I now. I think that's a great idea. Happy summer, my friends! I'm Haley, and for the next few weeks, we're learning what it means to make waves. Because what you do today can change the world around you. When you think of making waves, you probably think of the ocean or some other body of water. But the kind of waves we'll be making will be waves of love, peace, patience, and Joy. Joy's a good one because there's a lot of reasons to have joy over the summer. Warm weather, vacations, no school. <laughs> yep, summertime brings me a whole lot of joy. But can I be real with you for just a second? And now, a real moment with Haley. Sometimes, sometimes, summertime makes me nervous too. This has been your real moment with Haley. It's true, because as great as summertime activities are, what happens if something goes wrong? Like, summertime cookouts are a lot of fun, but what happens if it rains? And who doesn't love hanging out in the sun all day? Unless you get sunburned. But what could go wrong at an amusement park? Oh. Uh. Except for the lines. What? 27 hour wait? Uh, uh, could I cut in front of you? Sometimes it's hard to have joy, especially when things don't go the way you expect. Well, in today's story, we'll learn what the early followers of Jesus did when things weren't going the way they expect. Don't sneak up on me like that. Now I'm really nervous. The Bible, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 17 through 42. When Jesus was crucified, people thought it was the end to everything he had started. After all, who would follow a dead man? But within days, the lives of Jesus' friends were turned right side up. By the power of God, Jesus rose from the dead. He appeared to more than 500 people over 40 days before returning to heaven to be with God. But he didn't leave them alone. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and from one end of the earth to the other. On the day of Pentecost, the power of God's Spirit filled the brand new believers with great boldness and joy. All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Their joy was contagious. Please, I want to be baptized. That very day, 3,000 people chose to follow Jesus. The religious leaders were shocked. But this Jesus is dead. They're kind of saying he came back. Inconceivable. The new believers didn't just talk about following Jesus. They did it. They shared their lives, their food, their homes. They praised and prayed to God together. The Spirit of God was so strong in Peter and the other apostles that they made the sick well. Inconceivable! It's a trick! Arrest them at once! The religious leaders threw Peter and John in prison overnight and ordered them to stop talking about Jesus. But still, the joy of the Lord overflowed in the lives of the new believers. The love they showed each other was contagious. More and more people began to follow Jesus. The religious leaders panicked. More than 5,000 Jesus people now. Inconceivable! 
I do not think that means what you think it means. Arrest all the ringleaders, every single one. This time the high priest made sure all the apostles were thrown into jail. Oh, look, window cell this time. And we got the rodent upgrade. Will they put us on trial? Let's talk to God about it. In the middle of the night, an angel of the Lord appeared in the prison. Oh, I'm awake. Am I, am I awake? The shining figure opened the door to their cell. Hey, John, everyone, are you seeing this? Tall, bright, otherwise indescribable. Yeah. Quickly, the apostles followed the angel out of the prison into the shadowy streets. Go, stand in the temple courtyard. Tell the people all about this new life. Yes, we're on it. Early the next morning, the apostles went back to the temple and began to share about Jesus again. But the religious leaders hadn't gotten the memo yet and sent guards to bring the prisoners from jail. The guards returned alone. Explain yourselves! Uh, the doors were locked and the guards were on duty, but... But what? The prisoners are gone. Gone? Inconceivable! Hey, those guys you put in prison, they're standing in the temple courtyard. Inconceivable! I'm retiring that word. Bring them here! The apostles were brought to stand before the religious leaders. We gave you clear orders not to teach in Jesus' name. But you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings. You want to make us guilty of this man's death. We must obey God instead of people. The God of our people raised Jesus from the dead. Now Jesus is Prince and Savior. We're telling people about these things, and so is the Holy Spirit. In con Preposterous! Let me think. A leader named Gamaliel stood up and ordered the guards. Take these men out of the room. When they had left, Gamaliel addressed his fellow leaders. Think carefully about what you plan to do. This has happened before. Someone rises up, gathers followers. When they die, those followers scatter. Thanks for the history lesson. Your point? Leave these Jesus followers alone. If their plans and actions come from people, they will fail. But if their plans come from God, you won't be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Oh, well, conceivable. The religious leaders called the apostles in. Don't speak in Jesus' name. Like, seriously, don't do it. Is that all? Yeah, whip them and see if that helps it stick. The disciples were whipped, a horrible punishment, and then released. This isn't stopping us. No way. Look at all these people who don't know about Jesus yet. Hey, have you heard the amazing news? In spite of their punishment, the apostles were filled with joy. They continued to share the story of Jesus everywhere and more and more people believed. The early followers of Jesus had a lot to be joyful about. God had raised Jesus from the dead and God had given the Holy Spirit to everyone who believed. But there was bad stuff too. They were living in a time and place where it was against the rules to even talk about Jesus. So the believers were often treated badly. But whatever was going on, good or bad, they chose to have joy. And uh, let me get real for just a second. And now a real moment with Haley. Whatever's going on with you, you can choose to have joy. This has been your real moment with Haley. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be happy 24-7 or always have a smile on your face. Being sad is okay, but choosing joy means you don't let the situation you're in ruin everything. Like, when you get sunburned at the beach, you can find joy in a bottle of aloe. When the line is so long, try making a new friend. So, uh, What's your favorite movie? When rain interrupts your cookout, take the party inside. Come on, everybody. 
there's a lot of joy to be found when you don't let your circumstances get the best of you. Some people are able to find joy even in the toughest situations. So here's the one thing to remember today. Choose joy no matter what's going on. Choosing joy is another way we can make waves in the world because joy is contagious. So get the wave started, woo! That's what I call a microwave. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you understand microwave? Microwave. Okay. Bye. Wow, the apostles had been thrown into jail. They had been treated badly, but still they chose to respond with joy. They continued to share the good news about Jesus so that more and more people could believe. Yeah, I wonder if I could have been as joyful as they were in that situation. In some ways, I'm not so sure. But then again, the apostles had a lot to be joyful about. You're right. They knew that Jesus had died on the cross because he had come to be their savior. They had God's spirit filling their hearts with love and courage. Their joy came from one thing, their relationship with God. Wow, I guess joy was the evidence of what God's spirit was doing in their lives. Exactly, and you know what else? What? When you put your trust in Jesus, God gives you the Holy Spirit too. The Holy Spirit can help you choose joy in whatever situation you're in, good or bad. Hmm. But that's not always easy when things are going wrong. I have a hard time putting on my happy face when I'm having a bad day. Choosing joy doesn't mean you have to be happy 24-7. It's okay to be sad, but choosing joy means you focus on what's good and remember what you're grateful for. Even when you find yourself in a situation that's confusing or different, there is still a way to find joy. So wait, so joy is about more than being happy? Yep, it's something that comes from our relationship with Jesus. And it's something that can fill us when things are good and when things are tough. God's Spirit fills us with joy, just like God's Spirit filled the believers way back then. Wow. Well, that makes me feel joyful already. Why don't we pray and thank God for that? That's a great idea. Hey, will you all bow your heads and pray with me? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God, thank you for giving us the gift of your Holy Spirit. It's amazing to think how the early believers were able to choose joy in a tough situation. And it's because they were filled with your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and in such a powerful way. Please help us live with joy and courage like they did, no matter what's happening around us. Thank you for being with us through everything we face in life. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Believe it or not, we can change the world by choosing joy. People will notice when we live with joy in the middle of a not so joyful situation. They'll want to know where our joy comes from. I think that's a pretty cool way that we can make waves in the world around us. Ah, I love that. Well, I'm gonna choose joy even though sometimes it might be hard. It is hard sometimes because it's not a natural act. Human nature tells us to give up, move on, or cut our losses. You can be joyful when you have a tough homework assignment to do or you need to make things right with a sibling or a friend. You might not feel very joyful when something is going wrong at home and when you're not sure what to do. Well, I guess when we are in situations like that, we need to remember that joy doesn't come from the way things are going around us, that joy comes from knowing how much God loves you and all of us. You can find joy when you choose to trust God no matter what. That's why finding joy in every situation is a gift from God. And when God's spirit is living in here, you really can choose joy no matter what is going on around you. This week, look for situations where you can decide to choose joy no matter what the circumstances may be. See you guys next week in Time, Time Travelers! Travelers!